Hi, one and two-year-old leaders. We're preparing for March 22nd in our series called It's All About Jesus. Today, we are finishing up the Old Testament by taking a look at Malachi, the last prophet sent to um, encourage and rebuke, honestly, the Israelites as they are... Um, still living in Jerusalem. This is about a hundred years after Esther and, um, and Nehemiah. And so what we see in our lesson today is Malachi comes in and, um, he, he, he through God helps point out some things that the, um, Israelites have have picked up as kind of bad practices. Um, they have um, started using um, old sick animals for their sacrifices. They have just gotten lazy with their worship. They just kind of do everything with the motions, but not with the heart behind it. Um, and so Malachi comes in with kind of a wake up call, if you will. He um communicates that the people's lack of blessing. Okay, so the people are upset. The Israelite people are upset because they feel like God doesn't love them anymore. There's a lot of persecution to them as usual. And um, things are not what they expected them to be because they're back in the promised land. Don't we all act like that? And, um, and so because of that, they're saying, well, God doesn't love us, so we're not going to do what he needs us to do. And I'm sure all of us have fallen into that every once in a while. When things get really tough, we look around and like, God, I don't see that you're in this because we we want him to only provide all of our greatest wishes just like a genie. Um, but that's not God's plan for us. God's plan for us is to help mold us and to shape us into his image, which is Jesus, and to... Um, to to follow his commands so that we can be like that. And so when we get um, lax and when we get lazy, then we tend to forget to put God as number one. And that's exactly what Malachi has told the people in the book of Malachi. Um, now, as Malachi is finishing up, there's another 400 years before John the Baptist comes. And so like this is kind of one of those really big messages, kind of those one, one maybe a revival kind of message kind of thing that God's like, okay, guys, this is coming. And I promise you, your son, my son is coming, but we're going to have to wait a little while. And so I need you to do what I need you to do now while you wait, you don't have to um, have all of, you don't have to have all of it right now. And oh my goodness, we as people, we fall into this so easily. Um, our bottom line um, is God will never forget me. And how many times have have we all been faced with that, um, with with questioning that. And so if we can help at least encourage our little ones and tell them, you know, God never, ever forgets you. He loves you, period. It doesn't matter um, what you do or how you do it. Really, he loves you. He desires good for you. And he um, will continue to do everything to pursue you. But he does require for us to, to try to continue to um, to change, to to put off our old selves, to take off the things that that make us choose that attitude, to take that off and and decide to worship God with our whole lives instead of looking for all the creature comforts that help us see it that way. So you have a great activity in your small group today that's kind of an illustration of um, what, what the priests were bringing as sacrifices. But then on top of that, like we can talk about worship with our kids this week. Talk about worship and how worship is giving God your very 
best. That's not just in singing. Worship is not just singing. Worship is our whole lives, giving God the best we have to give. So when we give him, ugh, we, we're going to feel, ugh. and so your example today, you're going to have some um, objects, um, and I'm, I'm missing the fruit because I'm not going to go ahead and put that in there. It'll all turn out gross. But you have some objects that are used and dirty and broken and not not exciting, right? So show these objects to the kids. You don't you don't necessarily have to take them out of the box. Just have them look at it and then see if those are things that they would love to get as a gift. Because remember, worship is kind of like giving God a gift, like giving him the best we have to give. And so if somebody wrapped this up and gave it to your kiddos, would they get really excited about a whole cookie container with no cookies in it? Probably not. How about um, a toy that you can't put together because it's missing pieces? Would that be an exciting gift to get? Probably not. How about an old stinky dirty sock? No. And then you'll also have a piece of, of nasty fruit as well that's been in there for a while. And so in contrast to that, you have new things and, and nice things and, and things that have been um, preserved and put together. And so, you know, as a, as a contrast to what you have in the yucky boxes, you have nice ones. And which one would you want to receive? Because if you don't want to receive, ugh, then you don't give, ugh. You give good, right? And so this is such a great illustration. I love this. In fact, I may make some, some bigger boxes for our bigger kids so that they can um, kind of see it from the same perspective. And ultimately, that's what worship is. Giving God our best. Giving the God the best that we have to give to follow him with our whole lives. Not um, continuing to put on the old and the, the dingy and the sinfulness that all of us can fall into. Your um, memory verse will continue with, and this memory verse should be helping you see this in the big picture, right? And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, he tells us we're gonna suffer for a little while. Guys, 500 more years, 400 more years. You're going to suffer a little while, but that's a little while in God's mind. After you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, stand tall, and steadfast, like walking a straight line, doing what God needs us to do when God needs us to do it. Just like answering mom and doing what mom asks you to do the first time she asks you to do it. That's what steadfast is. All right. And then you also have some coloring pages if you'd like to um, share those with your kiddos so they can take those home and spend some time um, working on that. So in our um, series, we've been looking at our code, which is our rules for how we engage in relationship with each other in All-Star Kids. And I've been breaking that down and kind of giving you a defi different definition every week to the word respect. I don't know if you've ever considered what respect looks like to you, but there are some specific things and character qualities that respect as a Christian is really important to learn how to do. And today we're looking at attention and patience. And oh my goodness, that really fits with our story today as well. That when we focus and listen to others, then we have the opportunity to learn. Just like Malachi pointed out to the people, they, they were walking away from God's word because they weren't listening, because they weren't paying attention to what God had for them. How much could we learn from our friends and our groups if we listen, if we take time to listen? 
or to focus on what's going on around us. Instead of um, trying to, to um, I'm trying to think, instead of trying to, well, I think when I think when kids have a difficult time with focus, they're not realizing what they should focus on. And so remembering to, as you're talking about respect, helping point them to um, as you are speaking, you are using God's words because we're teaching from the Bible and God deserves that respect. And so when we when we have the chance to talk about who God is, then everyone should be focused on that and learning what they can from that. And maybe they're going to hear it a different way than they've ever heard it before. I would almost guarantee there is not a single kid in your group who has ever heard the story of Malachi. If they have, then they have an awesome family who's helping grow them up in those words. But um, by by helping redirect kids and helping them see what respect is, we're helping them build relationships. And through these relationships, we can all grow as disciples. Thank you so much for leading. I look forward to seeing you guys soon.